for everyone. <laughs> Call the Dallas City Council meeting to order for Monday, March 18th, 2024. Secretary, please call the roll. Council President Schilling. Here. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Barrientos. Here. Councilor Briggs. Here. Councilor Collins. Present. Councilor Fitzgerald. Here. Councilor Jantz. Here. Councilor Shane. Here. Councilor Verdon is excused. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing is, I uh, have introductions tonight. I'm going to call Chief Simpson up to introduce his new police officer. <laughs> Okay, the next thing on the agenda is the public hearing. This is a time set for a land use public hearing on an application for a comprehensive <coughs> plan amendment and zone change of property located on Cloud Corner Road. I will now convene the hearing at 703. Are there any conflicts of interest or ex parte context to declare? Yes. I don't have a conflict of interest, but I'd like to put it on the record that this is close, very close to my neighborhood. There doesn't seem to be any economic incentive or disincentive, but I just want to make that clear. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Okay. This hearing will be conducted in the following manner. We will begin with a staff report followed by questions from the Council of Staff. Thereafter, we will hear from the applicant and or applicants representative for a total of 15 minutes. This may be followed by questions of them from the City Council. Thereafter, we will hear from all others interested in presenting testimony on this item before the City Council. Each person will be provided three minutes to testify. Comments submitted by phone will be taken after in-person comments have been completed. If you will be testifying, please direct your testimony to the applicable criteria identified in the staff report or any criteria that you believe should be applicable. We will then provide the applicant with five minutes for rebuttal. Thereafter, after we will heard all testimony, I will close the hearing and ask the city council to deliberate and ask there's a motion to in response to the proposal. Will staff please present the report? Mr. Mayor, as Chase gets up, just to be clear, this is a, a continuance of the hearing that was begun uh, I think, uh, two meetings ago. Um, it, it's essentially going to be run as a new hearing because all counselors were not here to hear it. Um, but it is uh, whatever was presented in testimony or written evidence at the prior hearing is, is also part of the record for this decision tonight. But this will essentially be starting a fresh, a, a fresh look uh, just because we had that uh, number of absences among the council members to give everybody a chance to hear all the evidence and make a decision tonight. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Chase Ballou, City Planner. Uh, so the application uh, is a request to um, do a comprehensive plan amendment and zone change for 5.36 acres um, off of Cloud Corner Road, uh, changing them from industrial uh, to medium density residential. Um, so this is in the uh, southeast uh, part of the city, off of Cloud Corner Road, as I mentioned. Um, the property uh, itself um, is uh, accessed from the, the terminus of uh, Anna Street 
Um, you can see the, uh, the highlighted area there on the air photo. Um, this property uh, was a subject of land use proceedings uh, last year uh, when it was annexed into the city. So you may recall uh, seeing this property previously uh, at that time. Um, since it was annexed, the property has been uh, subdivided into three parcels. And this rearmost parcel is the, the one that is being uh, uh, proposed for, for rezoning. Uh, looking a little bit at the site, the, uh, the blue lines are the, uh, the waterways, the, uh, the Ash Creek North Fork um, there on the top, um, as well as a tributary to it, to it um, uh, down closer to the south corner. Um, there's some uh, riparian areas and uh, wetlands highlighted in the green, um, and then the future extension of uh, Fur Villa um, coming uh, across the railroad track down to Monmouth Cutoff is shown there in the yellow. So a little bit of the, the site context and, and how that relates to uh, development of that site. Uh, the existing zoning um, is uh, industrial, as mentioned, and so the proposal uh, is to rezone the back parcel there that's accessed from Anna Avenue to be medium density residential. Uh, the middle and forwardmost parcel placing Cloud Corner would still remain um, industrial. Um, so if you recall from the previous applications that we saw last year, uh, this is just looking at that rearmost parcel. For the record, that dotted red line is the UGB. Yes, so on the zoning map, the dotted red line is the urban growth boundary. Um, so there is one additional um, parcel to the east, uh, which is uh, currently outside of city limits, but is inside the urban growth boundary. Um, that's why the dashed green line for the city limits and the dashed red line for the urban growth boundary don't coincide. So uh, for comprehensive plan amendments and zone changes, there's uh, effectively five approval criteria. Um, the request has to be consistent with the statewide planning goals. Uh, the request has to be consistent with the, uh, the policies in the comprehensive plan. Uh, the public facilities, that is the, the streets, the, the sewers, the other public infrastructure, um, have to have adequate capacity to support development of the site, uh, particularly at the, at the requested zoning intensity. Uh, the change has to be in the public interest, which is up to you to determine. And uh, the request has to conform to the uh, transportation planning rule under state law. Um, and so the staff report goes into uh, some additional uh, some in the findings on how those uh, specific policies and goals are, uh, are met. Um, and so the um, finding from, from staff was that these policies and, and uh, approval criteria can be met. Uh, planning Commission uh, agreed that the approval criteria um, appear to be met. And so Planning Commission's recommendation and staff's recommendation was to approve the proposal. Um, so now it comes to you for uh, hearing and decision. Oh, yes, we have a slide for that. <laughs> uh, so that was the extent of the staff report that I have for you today. Um, certainly happy to answer questions. Yes. Does the city council have any questions of staff? Go ahead. Um, I'm noticing there's only one way into that area and one way out. Is that okay? So um, one the, street in, and then there's no other way out of the what would be the development, right? Yes. Uh, so fire code uh, does have regulations as to the number of dwellings accessible off of a, a dead end street. Um, that number is not zero, and so to the extent that uh, development is possible there, um, public facilities in that sense, fire service would have the ability to service the development. If I could keep in mind, uh, Council, this is this is a zone change application. There will be a lot more work uh, developed in the event of your approval tonight uh, uh, with the development proposal coming forward. That's where those kinds of things would be addressed. Um, access and the number of uh, lots and other elements of an actual development. Tonight is just to approve uh, based on the, or disapprove based on the uh, criteria for a zone change and not relying on any particular elements of the development itself. To the extent that it's serviceable by city facilities, which is an approval criteria. Those those yes. things wouldn't be important for oh, a yeah, decision but, but, for tonight. Yeah, well, no, not necessarily because you're not approving a development. Development would have to come mm -hmm. forward and show how they can meet the transportation criteria in the code before a development would be approved. Yeah, but I think the point for tonight's meeting is just what Chase said that those facilities are available 
um, for development uh, to go forward with. Yes. I have just a general comment and a question not related to this specifically, but we would have one egress and one entrance and egress, whether it's an industrial or, or residential anyway. For the Correct. time being, yes. Okay. So the question I have is on the piece in front of that, I, is there currently construction underway for on that piece right now? Um, so I can't speak to um, the status of building permits. Um, land use approval for a mini storage facility was granted to that facility, to that, that middle property. Um, and I know that there is uh, wetlands permitting being done on the property closest to Cloud Corner Road um, for, for the <coughs> extension of the, the driveway out to Cloud Corner. So I know that there is uh, at least land use entitlements for that, um, where they are on the, on the building permit side. That I, I can't say that that comes afterward. So, yeah. David. Yeah. Um, on page, ew, I hate it when they're sideways. On page nine, about the middle, under a comprehensive plan, chapter three discussion, um, there's a sentence that says land zoned to allow less dense attached middle family dwellings. Uh, skip ahead, the heirs, the non essential part. Um, shall be located within a quarter mile of employment, retail, and service centers. I read that as meaning within a quarter mile of some commercially zoned property. Is that a reasonable interpretation? Um, I mean, to the extent that it said employment, uh, employment land could also be industrial. So, um, yeah, well, it doesn't say employment, retail, or service centers. It says employment, retail, and service centers, which oh, sounds, okay. sounds like you've got to have all three to me. <clears throat> um, that that certainly uh, one potential interpretation. I I don't have a firm answer for that. Okay. Well, just to follow up and close the loop on on the question, um, is there any commercial land within a quarter mile of that piece? Um, there is not presently uh, any commercial zoning within that distance, uh, to my knowledge. Okay. That's all. Any other questions, by council? Okay, we will now hear from the applicant. As a reminder, you have 15 minutes to present. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Mayor Dalton and City Council. My name is Mike Reeder. I'm an attorney uh, based out of Eugene, practicing in Oregon. My address is 375 West 4th Avenue, Suite 205, Eugene, Oregon. I'm here representing the applicant, Ken Perkins, who is here in the audience <coughs> with us tonight. And if there's specific questions that he needs to answer, he's available. Also with me tonight is our land use planner, planning consultant, Fred Evander, and he is going to uh, go walk you through the PowerPoint presentation tonight. I'm here to introduce him and also to let you know that I've provided you with a letter uh, with a couple of attachments. One of those attachments is the executive order for from the governor uh, regarding housing. Regardless of where you land politically, uh, this has this executive order and the efforts to have more housing in Oregon has bipartisan support. Uh, so I just want to turn your attention to that letter. Now, I understand that you just got it, so you may not have read it yet. So tonight mm -hmm. in our oral presentation, we're going to try and cover uh, those questions uh, that were raised at the last mm -hmm. hearing. Uh, there were about four issues that I identify. And uh, so right now, I'm going to turn the time over to Fred, and whatever time is left over, I will take. And uh, I would also encourage you to, after our presentation, feel free to ask any questions that you might have. I practice throughout the state. Often city councils will, will after the public hearing is closed, they will discuss matters that could have been brought to the, uh, had a discussion with the, uh, with the applicant's representative. So we're here to answer any questions that you might have regarding the criteria and other substantive issues. So now I'm gonna turn the time over to Fred and then um, go from there. Thank you. 
Perfect. Hi there. My name's uh, Fred uh, Evander. I actually live in town, 746 Southeast Shelton. I am uh, a planner by trade. I've been doing it for about 15 years. And what we're here to talk about tonight is the proposed Southeast Anna rezone. We specifically call it that because the property is not accessible to Cloud Corner anymore. It's been divided from Cloud Corner by that minor partition. Um, as part of that partition, um, Mr. Perkins did uh, dedicate half of that road, that future, um, I think it's minor arterial through the site. Um, uh, and so that it has been dedicated. This is specifically dealing with the northern parcel uh, on the site, and that site is only accessible from Southeast Anna Road. Now, as Chase mentioned, there are five uh, review criteria that you folks are um, required to use to evaluate this proposal. We thank you um, that um, as part of this, you folks are acting as judges. We realize that that is a hard role for you folks to play, but we thank you that um, in this case, um, you'll look at the merits of the proposal and you'll make uh, a decision based on those merits. Now, for this application, um, our argument has fundamentally distilled down to three points this whole time. Uh, one is you have an abundance of industrial land, far in surplus of uh, what your, your economic opportunities analysis shows. Um, there's a deficit of land for housing just in this state, as well as um, a need in the community. And our third argument is that the neighborhood context, um, it's in the public interest fundamentally to have residences next to residences. Um, we do not believe that uh, routing truck traffic along Southeast Anna is a good idea. Um, and so those are fundamentally our arguments. I'll go into them just a little bit. I will say that our argument is not contingent on all three of those things being true. We fundamentally believe that even if one of those is true, our argument should stand. The application would be in the public interest. Now, the preservation of industrial land. We know that this is a concern of the city of Dallas. We heard it in the last meeting. Um, I have cut and paste some of the industrial development policies from the comprehensive plan there. You'll note some of the things that it mentions include an adequate supply of industrial land for the growth anticipated and making sure that there's a short term supply of land available uh, within one year of potential building construction. You also define things like prime industrial sites in uh, your comprehensive plan. It mentions preserving prime industrial sites and then it gives um, various criteria um, that are associated with those prime industrial sites, larger than 10 acres, sites with direct access to a highway or a major arterial, uh, sites with existing investments in, uh, in, in infrastructure, or sites and sites and properties uh, surrounded by properties that are planned industrial. In this case, our argument is fundamentally the site does not meet any of those things. In fact, you have a sufficient supply of industrial land. And in fact, it is buildable within the one year. Uh, looking at your industrial zone, you have an abundance of land on the south end of the community that is designated for industrial. Looking at your economic opportunities analysis, it says your land supply of vacant land is 213 acres of industrial land you have a land demand of 50 acres. That tells me that you have four times the needed amount of industrial land that you need. Looking at it, in looking at it spatially, um, I see um, uh, nearly 50 acres here, another 50 acres at the old mill site. I see 13 acres here, 10 acres here, four acres here. I see seven acres there. I see a bunch of vacant industrial land that's developable. I would then encourage you to think, why is this site right here then so uh, 
and valuable for the industrial end. Now I recognize that this is industrial here. This even is zoned industrial. I didn't include that in my calculations. Um, but this is going, has been purchased by Salem Health. Uh, we don't anticipate that that's going to be uh, industrial anymore. So again, my argument then is what is the importance of this site? Looking at uh, the public facilities deficient area, um, I see that the vast majority of those industrial lands on that last slide are not public facilities deficient. That tells me that they would be developable within the short term. Mr. Perkins site is out here uh, on this map, just for your reference. Based on that too, looking at projects over the last 10 years, I see that uh, you folks have had two approved greenfield industrial developments over the last 10 years. My question then is why do you need 200 acres? Um, uh, <coughs> some of the things that were approved have since been canceled or the, the application has expired. There's been two greenfield developments in the past 10 years. Based on all of that, I would say fundamentally you have a huge supply of industrial land and a, a very small demand for that industrial land. I would say when you have that level of imbalance, what you're essentially doing is making the land very, uh, you're extracting the value from the land. You're not using the land for its highest and best use. I would also argue fundamentally your urban renewal area mirrors this. Look. This urban renewal area goes for a lot of that industrial land, but what project, what property does it not include? It does not include Mr. Perkins site. So based on that, I would say you have sufficient supply, a limited demand, and Mr. Perkins site is uniquely not suited for that future industrial development. Uh, this is his, previous approval, you can see the site has been divided from the rest of the site. It's no longer 10 acres. It's not connected to a, uh, a major arterial road or anything like that. This project uh, doesn't fall within the classification of prime industrial land. Based on that, we would argue uh, the site should be rezoned. Now, the second thing to note is adding medium density residential land. You will see um, that you need medium density residential land. That was part of the reason that we originally proposed the land. We looked at your housing needs analysis. We said, wow, the community says they need uh, uh, medium density residential land. Mr. Perkins felt like he could achieve that. Based on that, uh, just for context, a lot of your medium density residential land are in your your node in your node areas, and in fact, the Lockreal node is planned to uh, to change their zoning to potentially incorporate more industrial uh, more medium density residential land. We would say that's all great, but fundamentally, uh, we would argue, especially with the Lockreal node, it's not pertinent to this decision because that plan has not been adopted yet. Uh, uh, you folks may elect to make a different decision regarding that plan at a future date. Um, that should not serve as a basis for, for denying Mr. Perkins' application. We know there's a severe need for housing in the community, uh, in the state, statewide. We also know that there's a need for things like rentals in this community. <clears throat> when the housing needs analysis was done, it referred to 2017 ACS data. That ACS data showed a 26% severe rent burden in the community. That essentially means that renters pay 50% of their income on their housing. That was 26% at that point when it was uh, written, the housing needs analysis. The last data available, it's now 38 or 30.8%. It's gone up five percentage points in less than five years. We would say that based on that, this should be approved. 
Lastly, respecting the neighborhood. Your industrial development policies say that you want to have the future development of industrial sites have, or the industrial sites, uh, or excuse me, you want to encourage employment growth where it best respects the neighborhood. And I would argue that in this case, industrial growth is not appropriate with this neighborhood. Southeast Anna and uh, Southeast Gregory, that neighborhood has 81 homes that are accessed by those two streets. Routing additional truck traffic along Southeast Anna to access that site is not appropriate. It's routing it specifically through that residential neighborhood. Here's some of the views of the street. This is uh, an older neighborhood. It has many manufactured homes in it. It has stick built homes. It's a nice residential neighborhood, right? I would say that based on that, this shouldn't be approved for that reason and that reason alone. Also, look at the character, uh, look at the quality of Southeast Anna. That's a lot of alligator cracking to say that we want to run truck traffic along that route. Uh, just here is some of the views of the community. So based on that, fundamentally, we have three arguments. Our three arguments are you have a ton of industrial land. Um, it's available for development now and suitable for development now. Uh, you have a need for additional housing. The state has a need for additional housing. And fundamentally, it's in the public interest of the neighbors to make this change. <clears throat> Are there any questions based on that? What feedback have you received from the actual neighbors? Um, Mr. Perkins has been out um, to the neighborhood, and he has talked with uh, neighbors multiple times. In fact, he was out there yesterday talking to neighbors. Um, at the Planning Commission hearing, I think we had five or so people. Five or so, so people come to the meeting. At the last council meeting, there was uh, one couple that also attended. Mr. Perkins has been really open uh, with his plans for the area. Um, to the neighbors, and we we have received uh, thirteen letters, twelve of which are in support of this. Okay. Hmm. Yes. Um, maybe this is a question for Mike when he gets up here, but I'll ask it now anyway because he can always cover it if he needs to. Um, the land was originally part of a larger piece. Um, was it subdivided before? or after annexation? It was subdivided after annexation. Yes. <clears throat> Just because we're taking time from the presentation, I don't think that we should, I think we should give probably back a minute and 47 seconds of the time that was actually there before questions were being asked. So if the, your attorney would like to do have another minute and 47 seconds, I think that was yeah, the I, time I, when the yeah. first one. I think they responding to is responding to council questions really should not be part of the 15 minutes. Correct. Yeah. And there's a minute 47 yeah. seconds. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Mayor, City Council, again, for the record, Mike Reeder. Um, a couple of things. Fred did a great job in presenting our case. Um, and what I'd like to add to, there was a question regarding uh, a policy, uh, policy four from the comprehensive plan, page eight of 13 of your packet. Um, uh, Councilor, is it Shane? Shane. Shane. Councilor uh, Shane asked a question. Um, I would posit that this criterion is, is, is met uh, based on the language. When it says, when the language says within a quarter mile of employment, comma, retail and service centers, but does not need to be located adjacent to planned commercial areas, et cetera, I would suggest that that is a just disjunctive phrase, meaning it's one of those three. If the, if the property is within one of those three, then it meets the criteria. I believe that's what the staff report suggests as well. Um, but to what Fred said, we have, there's also one other issue that was raised at last city council meeting, which was you also have a, sur a, a noted surplus of low density residential at least according to your latest buildable lands inventory for, uh, for housing. 
I would suggest that that is already outdated based on the crisis that we have for housing in the state of Oregon. However, even if that is true, case law makes it clear that, you, that the applicant need not go run to other parts of the city to find other locations where, lo where medium density residential may be appropriate or more appropriate. We only need to look at the criteria of approval that, that was uh, presented to you by, by Chase and also uh, reiterated in our PowerPoint presentation. And that's found in my letter. Again, the letter is nine pages long. It's a little dense, but I'm here to add color commentary to that. And we'd, uh, we'd love to explain it um, if you have additional questions. But I realize there's other people who are here to uh, testify. And so uh, I will reserve our five minutes for rebuttal unless there's any additional questions for me at this time. Any further questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know where to go next right now. Public testimony will now be allowed. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes to testify and we will alert you when you have 30 seconds remaining. At the three minute mark, your testimony will end. As a reminder, if you will be testifying, please direct your testimony to the applicable criteria identified in the staff report or any criteria that you believe should be applicable. I do have some people that have signed up to, to testify, and I'm going to go through that one first. This is uh, from a Janet Keniston. It says she is in favor. She wishes not to speak, but would be interested in any questions. And then she says, I definitely want to speak. So I'm going to ask you, do you want to speak or? I don't think she hears you, Kim. She's chosen not to testify. The next one is from uh, Nancy Tidwell. She is in favor, but would prefer not to speak. Do you want to speak now? Um, if you do, you please come up here and say your name. State your name and address. My name is Nancy Tidwell. I live at 1570 Southeast Anna Avenue. On the other side of the fence from the property that they are referring to is my backyard. It is the side yard to my home. I'm sure that I'm sure that there's not one person in this room that wants industrial property put next to your house. I'm sure you don't want a factory in your backyard. I'm sure you don't want recycling centers put in your backyard. My children, my grandchildren play there. There is the traffic that we have right now is reasonable. If you put just homes in there, it would give homes that we need. We don't need the industrial. Um, the owner of the property is also referring to putting a park in there. We have children in our neighborhood. And have a park. He's willing to put that in for us. It's only a smaller part of that land. This is not a big parcel of land at all. But we don't need big trucks coming down through our neighborhood. We have mostly elderly in the neighborhood. And I don't want I don't want that kind of thing next to my home. No, sure you wouldn't want it. So please please consider what Ken is proposing. Okay? Thank you. The next person that is signed up is uh, Susan Link. I definitely want to speak and she's opposed. My name is Susan and I live at 1484 South East Avenue. And I'm opposed to the canopy, the only street in and out of there. Um, as I showed, it's not super maintained to begin with. And the other is not see just a big pothole, and that's the only way out of uh, going off at Hannah. Um, at this point, people are already speeding. Hannah's a pretty straight shot. And having more traffic speeding, I, I can't imagine three times now, once in front of my house and once in front of the neighbors, someone has crashed into our car cars. And it's like there's a little tiny bend in the road, and for some reason, you can't keep your car on the road. Uh, we have a lot of elderly, everybody walks their dogs on the road. We can't walk on the sidewalk because it's at such an angle on the hill. 
that you know, hurt your ankles. So everybody's walking in the street. I don't think it's safe. I don't think it's a good idea. Um, if there was some other way in and out of the neighborhood, good not, Anna. <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is from a Mandy. Looks like Stas. Straw. Straw. Did you want to speak? Yeah. Sorry. My name is Mandy Straw. This is Joey, my son, who's five. And um, I just wanted to come oh, in. Your address for the record, please. Sorry, 611 Southeast Roosevelt Lane. Um, we have a Joey, <laughs> who's five. We wanted, we've been trying to figure out information on um, the all-inclusive accessible um, park at John Warner um, Park. On oh, oh. that part of the area. Yeah. That, would be, that would be for public comment, not yes. on this area? Yes, I think correct. you're off. Looks like you're snug with us. You're correct, but I thought, you're, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we're not to public comment yet. No, this is still just on this hearing. Sorry. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll call, you, call you back later. It's a little noisy, so I'm going to step out in the hall. If somebody could holler well, at me. Well, I tell you what. I tell you what. If you like, we could, and if there's no objection, we could recess the hearing, recess the hearing to let her speak uh, so that she doesn't have to wait through the hearing. I'm sorry. I'm going to recess the, the hearing and let her speak. Public comment. So I'm a mom of five. <laughs> I don't get to come to these things that often because I'm a mom of five. We're 20 to five. Um, but we were super excited as a family when we heard that Dallas won. I mean, we were one of the ones that were sending out the emails saying vote, vote, vote for this park, um, for an all accessible park, is what we thought it was coming in in 2022. And I haven't bugged anybody about it. <laughs> Because I, I thought it was coming, I thought it was being built. Take my kids to school every morning and drive by the science is coming soon, coming soon. And and it's not coming. <laughs> and I know we have um, we were awarded or the community was awarded, you know, this check for almost thirty five thousand dollars two years ago, at the end of almost two years ago. It'll be next week. And I just want to know what's going on with that. Um, I just returned from Salt Lake last week with Joey. We went, he has Cornelia de Lange syndrome, very rare syndrome, um, and went to a big conference out in Salt Lake. And as parents, we were talking about, you know, accessible parks for our kiddos. And um, it was actually on the list that, that we have one in, in Oregon. I'm like, mm, no, actually we don't yet. And so um, I'm just wondering, I'm wondering where we're at. I, I mean, I'm the first to jump in and say, hey, I'll help you uh go after some grants go after um but <coughs> so our parks and recreation manager is here tonight um, and i'm going to have her follow you out when you're done um, i do know that there's been some issues with the grant that we got for that um with state agencies there's some work that we need to do we had to have someone come in and make sure that there was not any archaeological things in the right. site, and I think now it's a wetlands issue. Um, in a in it. Well, what, what concerns me is mm -hmm. that just doing my own homework, and again, I don't mean mm -hmm. this is not my area of expertise at all. Is that it's still showing in the conceptual phase, mm -hmm. which is just is what sure. I understand just being. Sure. But yet we are, we're telling our community members. I, I would that, suggest you meet Jennifer out in the hallway and she can okay. answer, answer your questions. Then maybe, sir, could, could maybe the itemizer follow up and give an update on where we're at? Because every article they've said is that it's going to be finished or it's done. Or the last thing I saw was in the, in the fiscal year of 2025. So I guess my question too is we're building and we're expanding and stuff, but 
maybe instead of, again, I'm a mom, I'm just saying, maybe instead of going and starting new projects, let's finish the ones that we promised to our, our kids into the community. And to Mr. Barnard, too, you know, I mean, that's a whole nother thing. I'm like, oh, bless their hearts. You know, they they thought this park was going to be ready for their family. I'm looking at it as for Joey and his friends. I don't want to go to school. I would park. suggest you meet with Jennifer yeah, outside. Exactly. And what about the, like, if that money is here, 35, almost 35000 what about the interest of that money? She can answer that question. Yeah. That'll go towards the kids. Like, the I, you can ask her. Okay. okay. She she knows a lot more in detail than we do. So okay. Jennifer will talk to you. I, I promise she'll have some answers for you. She's really the subject matter expert on yes. this. Okay. And maybe that advisor can update the community so we know. Because <coughs> <coughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to reconvene the public hearing. Got uh, seven forty one. Is there anybody else that would like to testify? Okay, we'll move on. There's nobody on the phone? Okay. Nobody's on the phone? The door open. Here if I go. could have somebody open the door, we have to have, this is a public meeting, we have to have the door open. We will now allow the applicant five minutes for rebuttal. <laughs> Mayor Dal Dalton, City Council, again for the record, my name is Mike Reeder. Um, first, I'd like to re It's Mayor Woods. Woods, I'm sorry, where did I get Dalton? I apologize for that. Former, former mayor, former, but it's um, been a while. Okay, well, I apologize. No wonder Mayor Woods keeps looking at me. Like <laughs> you were losing points. <laughs> okay, I, I, I promise I will make it up to you, Honorable Mayor Woods. Um, I uh, wanted to respond to the testimony regarding the, the woman um, who spoke, Susan. I didn't quite catch her last name. Um, I'm pretty sure it wasn't Woods or Dalton, um, but uh, so she she was concerned about the fact that this site only has one uh, ingress and egress location, and that is true. Um, we would we would suggest that it's better to have residential uses on the 5.386 acre site rather than industrial, rather than having the mix of industrial traffic with residential traffic. Uh, so there's that issue. So it's really a false choice of doing nothing, you know, not developing it or developing it with residential rather than industrial. Uh, also in my letter, uh, I talked about the definition of site. So at the last hearing that I watched, I noticed there was some discussion about the property uh, that was originally before the city council when it was all unified together. Um, and the, it's since been partitioned as we've discussed. Your, uh, your code defines uh, site in a way in which we need to, or industrial, uh, prime industrial as being a site that is 10 or more acres in size in addition to some other factors. This, this property is not prime industrial for a variety of reasons, but one of those reasons is because it is less than 10 acres. And um, I, I go into some great detail about that, but what, what I wanted to read to you, that I think may be important for your consideration, is uh, on page three of my letter, uh, I, there's, Site is not defined in the comprehensive plan. However, this is the top of page three. However, it is defined in the development code as follows. And it says site for land divisions, property line adjustments, etc. not relevant to us. Um, for other purposes, the site is an ownership except as follows. So my client owns all of those three parcels. And Without an exception, it would be a site. But if you go to exception two, it notes if a proposed development includes only a portion of an ownership, 
and the balance of the ownership is vacant, which it is, the property is vacant, then the applicant may choose to define the site as the portion of the ownership that is proposed for development, which my client has chosen to do. So the development code does define the site and, it does, and the uh, comprehensive plan uh, defines prime industrial site. This property is not a prime industrial site. Now, Fred did a really good job of explaining that the, the fact that the city has overwhelmingly a surplus of industrial land. It has a shortage of medium density residential land. This project, this site is uh, the right use. Medium density residential is the correct use for this particular property. I went into great detail regarding the uh, public interest. Now, public interest is a very kind of a fuzzy standard. And you as the city council, it's your responsibility to determine what is in the public interest. But I would posit to you tonight that what is in the public interest is that this community, as well as the entire state of Oregon, have more housing. We have a housing crisis. We have a homelessness issue. Uh, we have we are underbuilding housing at a great rate. This provides an opportunity for us to chip away at that deficiency and to house more people. And as I always say, any front door is a front door that houses a family or an individual who already is not unhoused. Now, I'm not going to get into the debate about why some people are homeless, but the, mere, the fact is that if we don't create enough housing, we are going to make rent and mortgages way too expensive. And so when we're spending too much money on our rent and on our mortgage, we're not buying other things. We're buying, we're not able to buy new shoes for our kids. We're not able to buy other things that, that would bring in commercial and retail. And also the local, the local area, industrial users, they wanna to come to a community that has sufficient and reliable housing. If you don't have it, you don't attract those businesses. And I'll, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions? Thank you. I thank you in advance for your forgiveness, Mayor Woods. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to close this public hearing at uh, 7 Is there a motion by the city council? I'd like to have discussion before yeah. we do that. I have deliberation. Mm -hmm. I'm just following my script. So. <laughs> we can have some deliberation ahead of the motion. Sure. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, just to catch everybody up that wasn't here last time, we, as Fred and everybody has talked about, we have seen this property here before one time, and we talked about prime industrial. Um, they've brought it up, it's been brought up about what prime industrial land is and the, uh, the, the, the one thing that is not ever mentioned is that little catch word the characteristics may include these three things one of those three things is 10 acres it may include we all know what may and shall means it means it may include it it doesn't have to be 10 acres so what was not covered was in the staff report at the beginning is comprehensive plan 2.14 and the policy reads provide for an adequate short-term supply of suitable industrial land to respond to economic development opportunities as they arise short-term supply means suitable land that is ready for construction usually within one year of an application for a building permit or request for service extensions there were opinions that were given on this topic um, we saw graphics of how many acres we have of industrial land. Most of that industrial land is what we know as brownfield. The mill site is brownfield. It is not readily developable at this time, nor is it going to be in long future. And that's why the urban growth boundary was. Point of order, if I may. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Councilor Fred, Councilor Fred, Councilor Schilling is testifying to facts that are not in the record, as far as I know. I don't know if there's any yeah. testimony in the record about brownfields. Yeah, not I don't, not that I know of. Yeah, what's greenfield? Well, yeah, you you can address greenfield. Yeah, you you can address the 
policy, but you're right. I mean, unless we have evidence whether this is brownfield, greenfield, I don't know that we get into that. And, and I would like the, the opportunity, you know, should this go to Luba, I want the record to be clean. Sure. And I would, I would I suggest, appreciate that. Yeah, and thank you. So if, if, I, if you may just allow me to respond, you're, you do not have a, you have a definition of short-term industrial. You do not have a, you do not have an inventory of short-term industrial. Mm -hmm. So if the, if, the, if the city does not have an inventory of short-term industrial, it's very difficult for this, this uh, city council to make a finding that says that it's inappropriate to take 5.36 acres of industrial away because it could be considered short-term industrial. Because you don't know how much short-term industrial you have. It's simply not in the record. And it's not the applicant's responsibility to go, go out for the city on the city's behalf to come up with an, with an inventory. It's simply not there. So there's the choice ahead of us as far as we are policymakers and our policies that we have two policies and they are made a very strong case for the policy for residential. I won't disagree with that at all, but we also have the policy that I just read and that's where I would say that we as far as a benefit to the city we've gone through what what's determined why would it be more in the. Uh, I forget the terms that they actually use in the interest of the city and industrial land supports the city in a lot stronger than residential structures do. Any other? Yes, David. Yeah, just as a sort of a follow on to what you were talking about a moment ago. Um, the whole argument about the quantity of industrial land that we have, um, it's the right way to say this. Um, for me, that's not determinative one way or the other, because the fact that you have a certain amount of industrial land doesn't tell you what, how usable it is. Location matters too. There's an old story about a guy who drowned in a lake with an average depth of six inches matters where things are um, so just to list the number the raw numbers we have this much of this and this much of that um, for me you need to know more than that that's not determinative one way or the other that's just in passing Eric. i'd just like to comment i i like most of us cherish our industrial property around here and that piece was much larger than just five acres which we were trying to protect that i don't see it doesn't make any sense to me that an industrial facility would be attracted to a five acre spot like that with with minimal egress and, and access. Um, and I think that we need to have some common sense in how we administer our, our zoning and our, and our rules here. And I, I think the community out there, the neighborhoods are overwhelmingly asking for this. It just makes sense to me. And I'm going to vote to support the Planning Commission's decision to support this. Yes. Michael, what are your thoughts of the quality of life of the residents that are already there as um, this industrial uh, property, if it's a term industrial property, how they're affected? I think that's called testifying. No, uh, uh, it's, it's quality a discussion of, life. of the public interest. Uh, that whole neighborhood is surrounded by industrial ground, mm -hmm. all sides. Mm -hmm except for across to the south. Okay, from what I see, it's just open pasture land right now. Um, you have a Syntec engineering that's there. You have the railroad tracks. You have a potential to have a uh, Salem Health and a helicopter's landing. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Yes, I have a question. What if somebody needs to remind me of the plan for the extension for Fur Villa? What is that? What's that plan? Chase, do you want to address that? Thank you, Chase. Um, answering questions is what I'm looking for. Um, so the Dallas Transportation System Plan um, does call for the future extension of Fur Villa um, from the current terminus at, at Miller. Um, 
proceeding south along the urban growth boundary line, um, ultimately um, kind of running through these, these this property here um, and connecting down to uh, Monmouth Cutoff. Um, so providing essentially that, uh, that eastern bypass of the city, as it were, um, as, a, as a collector arterial uh, kind of street. Um, so a timeline on that, you know, that's obviously in the future. It hasn't been built yet, but um, it is in the transportation system plan currently. Um, we are about to update that plan as well. So we'll see kind of what the time frame on these things looks like once that new document is prepared. And, and I know you don't have a crystal ball, so mm -hmm. I'm not asking for an actual date because that's not fair. But are we looking at the next two to five years, the next five to 10 years or beyond that? We don't know. We don't know. I would imagine that uh, development activity in the area is something that will drive that if we have large industrial users wanting to locate out there. It makes sense that we need some infrastructure for that. If it's no development. So would the de development you know. of uh, like an apartment complex, would that drive a sooner build of the extension of for villa or would really looking at like industrial because you said uh, industrial so right to the extent that funding priorities for public infrastructure that's a, a council decision um there'd certainly be some some city funds to be directed towards such a project so that's really speculation it yeah, is it is very speculative at this point unfortunately okay thank you i, I know you don't have a crystal ball i just needed some sort of idea yes any other discussion? Well, I'd entertain a motion. I'll move to adopt the recommendation of the Planning Commission to approve the comprehensive plan amendment and zone change and direct the city attorney to prepare an ordinance amending the Dallas Odeon map to reflect this action. Is there a second? Second. I moved and second. Any further discussion? Just do a roll call vote on this, please. I'm going to find it. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Barrientos? Yes. Councilor Briggs? Yes. Councilor Collins? No. Councilor Fitzgerald? No. Councilor Jantz? Councilor Shane? No. <clears throat> Councilor President Schilling? No. And Councilor Burden is absent. So fails on a vote of uh, three, to three yes and five no. Correct. If I can ask then, uh, in order, I'll need to, <coughs> we need to bring some findings uh, for the city council. And I want to synthesize what I think I heard. There wasn't a lot of discussion from this side of the room, but that the, uh, application did not meet the applicable economic development policies is that what it is this is protection of industrial land we have policy 2.1.3 policy 2.1.4 are those the relative the relevant policies i think staff report does acknowledge that it really is not <clears throat> prime industrial land under the code uh so i, th I think that would be a difficult uh, yeah. finding to make but that your findings are that uh, uh, by the application of policies 2.1.3 and 2.1.4, that leads you to the conclusion that the application does not meet the uh, relevant uh, criteria of the planning uh, of the comprehensive plan. Is that Wasn't there some discussion about public interest? Or did I miss that? There was some. Yeah. But I don't know if that's applicable. Yeah. It's, because the way they brought it in is under a different section. So you are applying policy 2.1.3 and three, four. adequate supply of industrial land accommodate types and amounts of economic development. I think that was not addressed in Mr. Perkins letter policy 2.1.4 was, but you're just adopting a different interpretation. <laughs> All right, I'll prepare some findings. In order of reflecting the city council's decision tonight will be mailed to the applicant and all participants of record within 10 business days. Thank you. The next thing on the agenda is public comment. I have one half, one person who wanted to speak, but he has left the room, Robert Greenway. So is there anybody who would like to testify for public comment? 
I don't see anybody jumping up. So anyway, we got his turned in. Consent agenda. The consent agenda is approval of March 4th, 2024 work session meeting minutes. Approval of March 4th, 2024 city council meeting minute. Recommended approval of a limited on-premise OLCC application for pots and what whatnots pottery and February 2024 financial report. Is there anything you want to pull off the consent agenda? Move to approve. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Reports or comments from the mayor and council members? Everybody all talked out? <laughs> well, I had the opportunity on Friday to introduce uh, U.S. Senator Ron Wyden at his, his open houses that he was having. And I told him a story. You have to bear with me because I got the microphone. And I recently was on a trip to Tennessee for a conference and we went through Dallas Fort Worth and I told the lady sitting next to me, I'm the mayor of Dallas. And she looked at me and I said, I'm not BSing, I'm the mayor of Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Google it. Google Dallas for me. <laughs> and there he comes up there's a picture of me she was i didn't know there was a dallas oregon i said well i didn't know there was a dallas texas <laughs> she, no, she no longer talked to me That's so any other comments from council members yes um i'd like to take a big thank you to the mayor for uh, sharing his state of the city address on Thursday, oh, yeah. he, and so he did a nice job. And uh, I, there were we even had audience, so I was impressed. I was there. <laughs> Which Dallas was? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to reports from city manager and staff. I'm actually going to ask Cecilia, the finance director, to come up and talk about the fiscal year 23 plan of action letter to the Oregon Secretary of State. Thank you. Um, as I have on the staff report, as many, well, all of you know that we struggled getting the audit done for fiscal year 2023, and we finally did get it done and uh, uh, submitted on February 29th. And um, from that, as, as you know, we had new, uh, a new audit firm um, conduct our audit this year. And so um, from that, they found one finding that the communicated uh, to have a plan of action that requires us to send a plan of action letter to the uh, Secretary of State's office. And um, as you can see on the uh, actual plan of action for the city of Dallas, the actual deficiency they found was a, it was a material weakness and it was the revenue recognition of the um, American Rescue Plan Act dollars. So during last year, the fiscal year 21-22, when we first received the first funding of the ARPA, it was recorded as all revenue and they said we couldn't do that. It had to be recorded as revenue when we spent it. And um, it was just something I did not know. Um, we had recorded the, um, what were the dollars before that? The C CRF funding mm -hmm. that we got from the COVID that way and the previous auditors never mentioned that. So this was something that the current auditors came up with. So this is kind of a formality, just a letter. This letter that's presented in your packet is will be emailed to the uh, Secretary's of State Office as soon as it is signed. And our plan of action is we're following exactly what the auditors recommend was to recognize the revenue when the expenses are spent. So we'll be doing that at the end of this fiscal year. We'll, we'll be all right. Yeah. So to use the old bean counter analogy, because it's one everybody knows, they're not saying that we misrepresented the number of beans, just that we put them in the wrong jar. 
Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, just in the wrong jar, and he didn't like it. So, so this doesn't happen very often. It was just something the new auditors came up with. So, um, so anyway, we just needed to get this sent to the secretary. So <coughs> good on it for this year, and we'll get it fixed for the this new fiscal year. And you need a motion from the council approving yes, it. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I move to adopt the City of Dallas FY uh, 2023 plan for action related to the City of Dallas fiscal year 2023 audit. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All those in favor say no. Passes unanimously. And then just one other update. We are in the process of fixing our sound system. I don't know if you noticed it works a little better today and we haven't had as much crackling. Apparently we had one frequency of microphone that didn't play well. Um, they will come back and analyze the rest of the frequencies to make sure that it's working. But I think we're well on our way to making um, a better sound system in here. So just Sounds wanted to give you guys already. a yeah. The next thing on the agenda is first reading of ordinances, ordinance number 1893. An ordinance amending Dallas City Code section 6.325 relating to parking time limitations. Just a brief explanation. Um, back in 2017, the council approved a resolution that delegated to the city manager certain authority regarding traffic and, traffic and parking control. Um, this Dallas city code that's here includes provisions regulating timed parking on a certain number of streets. Um, this proposed amendment just kind of restates the authority that was in that resolution that allows the city manager to also designate some to also designate some timed parking. Yes, I'm not opposed to this at all, but why is it necessary if he already has the authority? Well, it really clarifies a, an apparent conflict between the two code sections as it currently stands. Oh, okay. This this is it appears to be comprehensive in terms of its regulation of timed parking downtown. So it's getting rid of the ambiguity. Yeah, that's right. Just okay. saying, yeah, but the city manager can nevertheless adjust based on their delegated authority. Okay. I declare resolute for ordinance number 1893 to pass this first reading. Exit 523. A resolution approving the application for an Oregon Parks and Recreation Department local government grant program grant for the construction of 10 new pickleball courts at Dallas City Park and 20 accompanying diagonal parking spaces on the north side of Branville Drive and authorizing the city manager or the city manager's designee to sign and submit the application. And we do have Jennifer Ward here if you guys have any questions. It's too bad you got to stay around for this whole meeting. It's been great. <laughs> Any discussion on this? Have secretary call the roll, please. Councilor Barrientos? Yes. Councilor Briggs? Yes. Councilor Collins? Yes. Councilor Fitzgerald? Yes. Councilor Jantz? Yes. Councilor Shane? Yes. Council President Schilling? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Passed eight to zero. I declare then our resolution 3523 to pass by unanimous vote. Any other discuss any other business discussions? Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>